think we're back. Got a split screen on my cell phone. I'm not sure why I can see myself and I can see Brother Bates, but the feedback I have. So Brother Bates, just give me a nod. Or, or... Hey, you, you Praise God. Praise God. Like we're good to go. Um, again, we're, we're grateful to be here. And uh, we praise God in spite of the technical difficulties. We give him the glory. Uh, we thank God for your patience as we have been in this text, Hebrews uh, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3 in particular. Is God the author and finisher uh, of your or our faith? Of course, those of us who are believers in Jesus, uh, those of us members of the body of Christ, we, we affirm uh, without embarrassment or without the fear of contradiction that he is the author and the finish of our faith. And one of the things that the Hebrew writer does in this text is call us to a commitment to the course, a commitment to the course. He says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race is set before us. He is the author and finish of our faith. Therefore, we must commit to the course. We have the blessing and the benefit of our witness testimony of brothers and sisters from the Old Testament and the New Testament who can and have reported what happens when a person puts their faith in the Lord. But in order to stay committed to the course, we must lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. This phrase is in the aorist tense. This means it's like a snapshot. It is in this case, it means that this action must precede running the race. In other words, before we run the race, we got to lay aside every weight. When we see professional runners, they are not carrying a bunch of weight and neither are they wearing a lot of clothing. A weight is a burden or an impediment. Weights are anything that encumbers us Weights are things that interfere with or delay our progress. Weights make it very difficult to stay committed to the course. Sometimes the problem is not the course. The problem is the weight that we are carrying. We are prone to quit before we finish when we are carrying weights. Weights are not necessarily seen some Christians need to understand that just because something isn't a sin doesn't mean that it's in your best interest. A weight could be misplaced priorities. Uh, there are many potential weights. What's hindering you? What's in the way of your progress? There are many potential weights such as selfishness, uh, all types of isms such as workaholic isms and those who have an earthly focus rather than an eternal focus there are many weights fear is a weight worry is a weight lack of discipline is a weight doubt is a weight some friendships are weights some habits are weights guilt can be a weight shame can be a weight. Beloved, we may need to drop some weights in order to win. Laying aside is the picture of taking off a garment. We need to unburden ourselves of the baggage that weighs us down. I said we need to unburden ourselves of the baggage that's weighing us down. There are many things that may be that may be burdening some folks on here tonight in this cyber sanctuary. Regret can be a burden. Resentment can be a burden. Anger and unforgiveness can be a burden. Trauma 
and church hurt can be burdens. Those with a spirit and an attitude and disposition that think that they have to be perfect can be a weight. People who feel like they need to be in control of all things at all times, that can become a burden. We have to be willing to unburden ourselves if we're going to remain committed to the course. Yes, Wait. right. Weights, weights, that's plural. He says, but the sin, that's singular. The sin in view is departure from the truth. It is the sin of unbelief, which results in missing the true purpose or goal of our lives, which is the Lord himself. The commitment to the course is really a commitment to God it is the commitment to live according to God's terms and God's goal. Any personal goals we may decide upon must be selected in harmony and congruency with God's ultimate goal or purpose that he has set for us. It's so easily, so easy rather to get obstructed by our personal agendas. The encouragement, let us run. That's a present tense active verb. While the laying aside of weights and the sin which so easily ensnares us is an aorist tense, which is a snapshot, a one-time thing. The main verb to run is present active tense. In the original language, the present tense signifies continuous action. The writer is saying, when we get to the point that we are running and committed to the course, we have to keep on running. Uh, this is not a relay race, it's a marathon. And we must be willing to go the distance. And going the distance means having some stamina. It means having some endurance. We must run with incredible endurance. The word for endurance is the original term, upamone. It describes the action of bearing under and the patience it entails, both things and circumstances. Endurance is the power to withstand hardship or stress, especially the inward stamina that is necessary. The course we are committed to is not always easy. There are potholes in the course. There are enemies along the course. There are trips and falls along the course. There are shin splints around, along the course. There are injuries while running this course. There are steep hills and valleys along this course. Along this course, there are disappointments that are along this course. There are griefs along this course. There, there are sufferings along this course. It's not an easy course. Therefore, we need stamina. We need endurance. We need to be able to put up with some hardships, some, some discomforts, some injuries, some hurts, some afflictions, some persecutions, some storms and troubles. Uh, and we cannot stop running. We have to keep running the course. That's the commitment of the course. If he's the author and finisher of your faith, not only must you be committed to the course, you must understand that he is the completer of the course. The text says in verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author of our faith. Undoubtedly, we have the tendency to buckle under the thought of enduring while we run the race set before us. How can we be successful? <clears throat> we often wonder, how in the world are we going to make it? We must consistently keep our eyes on the goal. The goal of this course is Jesus himself. We must yeah. the goal is yet in the distance, but we are closer than when we first begun. Jesus is our role model. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. As author, uh, of our faith, that means he's the trailblazer. He is the founder of the Christian faith. Jesus is not only the cause of our faith, but he is also the first to complete this course. As the finisher of our faith, 
Jesus brings this to completion without defect or blemish. Jesus himself endured great suffering along the course. He endured the cross. The word endures means to abide under and to bear up courageously under suffering. Jesus suffered the agony of the cross. Jesus endured betrayal. Jesus endured the forsaking of his disciples. Jesus endured the denial of Peter. Jesus endured the mocking and the beating. Jesus endured the flogging. Jesus endured the rejection. Jesus endured all of the vile mistreatment. Jesus endured the corrupt trials. Jesus endured the separation. Jesus endured the cross, despising the shame. He endured the nails. Jesus endured six hours of pain on the cross. He endured the most torturous execution. Consider the degree of suffering and shame that Jesus endured on the cross. The Lord endured because his focus was on the joy set before him. He knew something good would be the end result of his endurance. He knew that he would one day be wearing a crown. He knew that he would find ultimate victory over every enemy and be seated at the throne of majesty. Jesus knew that the trial was only transitory and the victory was eternal. He is the completer of the course. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Beloved, we got to have a commitment to the course. We must believe and understand that Jesus is the completer of the course. And then lastly, we must consider the Christ. Verse 3 says, For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. When we are committed to the course of faith, I told you already, there are going to be obstacles and challenges along the way. We will have some unexpected challenges in this life. We will overcome as we consistently consider the Christ. Nothing we can really compare to what the Lord Jesus endured in his passion, suffering, crucifixion, and shame. He bore the weight and the penalty for every sin ever committed all time. He not only endured hostility, but he became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in him. When we consider Jesus, it will help to keep us from becoming weary and discouraged in our souls. I don't know who in the cyber sanctuary is battling with weariness and discouragement right now, but this is a word for you weariness is when we have become physically mentally and emotionally drained i said weariness is when we have become physically mentally and emotionally drained it's not only physical it's not only mental but it's also emotional it's not just emotional but it's also mental. And it's not just emotional and mental, but it's also physical. Discouragement is what happens when we have reached the point of total exhaustion. These twins, weariness and discouragement, can cripple our commitment to the course. These two agents have paralytic properties. When the soul gets weary from enduring this long distance course, then discouragement sets in and finishes us off. Beloved, our word tonight is to know and believe and trust that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Paul, that old trial in the book of Philippians chapter one and verse six, said that we ought to be confident in this very thing, 
that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Listen, beloved, that what God has started to do, he has promised to finish it. Something happens in us to reinvigorate us, to refresh us and revive us when we consider Jesus. I, I, I know that you're going through some things. I, I know that you're having some hardship and obstacles and difficulties in your life in this moment. I understand that. But just pause for a moment to consider Jesus. Just pause and think for just a moment to consider what Jesus has done for you and me. Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Since he had a beginning and the end covered, um, I don't have to worry about what happens in the middle. I, I said since Jesus has the beginning covered and he's end covered, I, I don't have to worry about what happens in the middle. Uh, that, that's what Paul was talking about in Romans 8, 28. Uh, he said, and for we know all things work together for good to them who love God and are the called according to his purpose. Because Jesus is not only the author of our faith, but he's the finisher of our faith. Based on Philippians 1 and verse number 6, what he started to do as author, he is committed to finishing for us as well. And since he's promised to, uh, to finish it, it doesn't matter what happens in the middle. As long as I consider Jesus, as long as I keep on running this race, I don't have anything to worry about. Consider Jesus. Consider Jesus. Who is Jesus? Jesus, the Lord. Consider Jesus, the great God and Savior. Consider Jesus, the Redeemer, the Lamb of God, the Head of the church, the Alpha and the Omega, the Prince of Peace, the Messiah, the Savior, the Good Shepherd, the fountain flowing free, the wheel in the middle of the wheel, the righteous branch, the Son of Man, the Son of God, the Lily of the Valley, the Rose of Sharon, the Resurrection and the Life, the True Vine, the Light of the World, the Rock of ages, the son of David, the son of Abraham, the suffering servant, consider Jesus because when we consider Jesus, we, we find op optimism for our obstacles. When we consider Jesus, we find hope in our heartaches. We find power in our problems. We find assurance in our agonies. We find mercy in our miseries. We find confidence in our circumstances. When we consider Jesus, we find resiliency in our ruins. We find buoyancy in our battles. We find sanity in our struggles. We find victory in our valleys. We find revelation in our situations. We find peace in our predicaments. We find praise in our pain and love in our loneliness and joy in our joblessness and faith in our fires and strength in our shortcomings and reassurance in our burdens and grace in our grumblings when we consider Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We want to take this time to encourage you, uh, if you're in need of prayer, uh, right now, if either message or the songs or God's spirit is moved in your heart on tonight and you need prayer, we're encouraging you to put that uh, in, the, in the live feed. If you want to give your life to Jesus, the, the gospel is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you believe that, you're willing to repent of your sins confess your faith in him, be baptized in this for the remission of sins. He adds you to the church and what God begins to do in you, he will complete it unto the day of Jesus Christ. So beloved, find the church of Christ. If you're here, uh, you're not a member of the church of Christ, find a church of Christ in your local area. Let them know that you are in this revival. You heard the word. You want to learn more about 
uh, Jesus Christ. You want to give your life to him. You want to be baptized for the remission of sin. And they, they are the Church of Christ. They will receive you. And they'll share with you and serve you. Uh, we thank you so much again for your time and your attention. To God be the glory. Thank you, Brother Bates. Thank you, Brother Siggers. And uh, the Churches of Christ there in the Cleveland area. May God continue to bless you and keep you.